ladies welcome to women wednesday if you follow me on instagram then you saw that i'm doing a huge push this week to really put some high value content in the world on mondays i'm doing um what's monday again mindset monday on the don't be useless podcast on wednesdays we're doing women wednesday welcome and on fridays we're doing day job friday can i just say i don't know why youtube turned my comments off I don't know and I'm bummed because this is something I really want to have a conversation about so I'm gonna have to throw a post up on my Instagram and on Facebook so us ladies can talk about this once you start comparing who you are or what you have to your spouse you are no longer a team the Bible says that you are supposed to become one one meaning not in your mind you're still your own individual person it doesn't mean your mind goes away and you're thoughtless but it does mean that you are a team you're working together and you're building something so once you start comparing money you start comparing relationships you start comparing all of these things to your spouse you are killing your relationship because comparison is the greatest killer of joy trying to lead your husband is like such a bad thing first of all it's exhausting it's exhausting trying to get him to do this and get him to do that because if he does this and we're gonna be so much better and he's gonna be so good and because i got him girl sit down sit down don't no dude want his wife telling him what to do all the time you know what happens you become a nag who wants to be around a nag nobody so sit down let that dude be accountable to God here's what I mean I want you to pray for him yes trust God with who he is trust God with how he needs to grow God knows him way better than you know him so if you put yourself in a place of of I give him to God it helps you to have more peace in your life because you are trusting God to handle him so that means God, I need to see him closer to you. God, help him to talk to you more and to pray. I want him to be an example for our kids. You're telling God these things. You are praying for these things. Now, if there are personal needs you have, you are expressing that to him too. But you're not trying to drive it. See, that's the difference between leading and truly submitting. Like, you are trying to, you're submitting something to him, but you're saying, hey, this is something I need like and he has to submit to you in order to respond and meet that need and that's where when the Bible talks about um, that you're supposed to submit to each other that's what it's talking about there is give and take so be able to say this is a need I have like quality time I need to hang out with you and you're working so much and we need to be together and I need this to, to feel loved and to have my friend so you don't have to drive it you don't have to do all the scheduling of the date to do it. You tell them, I need you to ask me out. Like, I feel bomb when you do that. Say what it is, but don't drive it. I would even remind him if you feel like he's falling off, but you wanna make sure you're able to share your heart and say it. Do not try to drive it home. You can create so much conflict as a woman, which we have so much influence, um, of beating him up about it versus helping him to start leading on his own. Give him the guide but say what you need i want you to think about this if you are in a marriage where you don't have a voice where you are being told who you are your identity is gone you can't pursue your own personal purpose and individual um, expression of who you are i want you to think about is this still submission or are, have i moved to a place where i am now a servant I say this because I've seen women lose who they are and everybody goes through things and I'm not here to bash husbands or all guys but I have seen guys take on the attitude of ownership of their wives and I do not see that in the Word of God I'm a Bible girl that is what I live by and when I went back and looked through Ephesians 5 and looked through the scriptures I'm gonna try to plug in that scripture right now Ephesians 5 talks about one we're supposed to submit to one another. It's not just women who submit to husbands, it's us submitting to each other. Meaning there is a give and take all throughout your life and that does not go away because you got married. 
Next, it goes on to say, yes, we are to respect and have an admiration for our husbands. We are to respect the position that they are in because God holds them accountable for the whole relationship, the headship of the whole thing. And no, I'm not trying to make life hard for you or them, but what we want to do is make sure that we are still having the right heart. We're still able to be who we are and who God called us to be. The rest of this chapter deals with who that man is supposed to be, how he's supposed to be leading, how he is supposed to be selflessly loving his wife. That is a quote from the Bible. Selflessly loving, sacrificing, who he is should be cleaning her up. Any healing that she needs, he should be able to be a vessel for that or it should be able to flow from who he is because he is that leader that follows Christ and lives for Christ. That is what the Bible says. So it has two scriptures about wives and like in this section about marriage and about four or five about who he should be. Sis, don't be so hard on yourself and don't let your marriage weigh you down so much to where again, you feel like you can't have a voice to be who God called you to be just because you're married and just because you're a wife. So you may have realized that your love is everything you need, but then there's going to come a point where you realize you also need boundaries. In every relationship, at some point, both of you are going to you're going to jack up. And I'm not talking about something extreme that's cheating or something like that. You're going to say something that they don't like. You're going to do something. Like, it's just going to be, you're just going to have those days. And what will happen is whenever he does something to you, I think sometimes we can let it go. And we don't say anything. And it is dangerous to not say anything when you have one of those days. Meaning, if he crosses a line with you, it actually hurts you, and you don't say anything, you in turn are saying, it's okay to talk to me like that. It's okay to treat me like that. Because you haven't said, I don't appreciate, or it makes me feel like this when you. There's a certain way you can talk to somebody that makes them not defensive. Yeah, I've had to learn that. The hard way. If you find that the conversation hurts you, you felt dismissed, disregarded, that's something you need to bring up outside of that conversation where you're able to say, I feel dismissed and disregarded when you do this. When I hear you say whatever, whatever while we're talking, it makes me feel like you don't want me to have a voice in this relationship, even if you disagree with me. So you want to make sure that you are speaking up. You are putting those boundaries in place and it's in love you're not trying to tear them down with your boundaries but you are making it clear and you are standing in who you are as a woman and you're not going you know crawling under a you know a table every time you disagree you're able to stand in your own so get your boundaries girl another big mistake i see wives make is we can start ignoring our husbands just straight up ignoring like we start going our own direction because maybe he's still sitting on the couch after 10 years and you like look i'm trying i'm a grinder now like i'm trying to get my body together i'm trying to grow my edges back i'm trying to do all this stuff and if i'm trying to do that and you still sitting on the couch well then i am moving on doing my own thing you still love him you may not like him as much but you still love him but if you start ignoring him, there is no shot at you guys being the couple you could be. Do not start ignoring him. How do you do that? That means sometimes you need to join him on the couch. I know for me, I've been working on um, in ministry and then I'm doing this channel and a podcast. So I'm having to balance a lot. And I found myself at one point ignoring my husband. I wasn't even trying to. I just start focusing on my grind. I was like, I don't want to get you. I was just grinding. So, I don't want you to make that same mistake. I want you to consider making sure he is built into the flow of your life. That there are things, checkpoints that you guys have that you are meeting up. So every Monday, every Wednesday, you know, we're watching TV this, these times or we have book reading nights or we only double date once a month because we want to make sure we're dating each other two to three times a month. You know, just by ourselves with no kids or whatever. So. Don't ignore him. Make sure you are working him right on into the fabric of your life. And lastly, 
This one has to go back to when I was first, first married. And people ask all the time, you know, what advice do you have if you're newly married? And this is what I say nine times out of 10. There's so many good pieces of advice though. But one of my favorite is never stop being friends. Do not. There are times where as a husband, you may feel like he failed you. You like, look, you dude, you, you ain't, what, what you doing, okay? But if you can remain friends, then whenever there's a new movie that comes out or other things that you, you guys connect over and you were dating, whatever it may be, like you still can laugh and kick it and hang. And you can almost put the husband expectations to the side for a moment while you have a friend, while you connect with your friend. So friendship being the baseline is everything. Don't get so caught up in the husband-wife space that you forget the best friend space because you should be able to feel safe and talk to, in a healthy marriage, you feel safe and feel like you can talk to the person you're married to. So make sure y'all stay friends, girl. Stay friends. I'm throwing this bonus one, y'all. I just could not resist. I try to keep my list to five. This, I guess this is a six. Do not start living for your spouse. Meaning only what they think matters in life. And that is it. The danger of living for your husband is you inadvertently make him God in your life. And he's just a person. And he's going to have seasons, ups and downs, different things. And by making him God, you can give him the power to crush you. And you don't want that. The only person who should have that type of power in your life is God Almighty. He is your God. Your husband is meant to be a demonstration of God's love on this earth. Again, Ephesians 5 this is my main text for this whole video. So you want to make sure that you have your husband in the right perspective. You're respecting his position. Uh, the Bible says that the husband should be a protector of his home. You are, you're respecting and you're allowing for that. But you absolutely are not, you know, I can't, you know, if I get this big, my husband will not love me anymore. Getting into that whole space, meaning you have made his opinion and who he is God, and it is killing your self-esteem and all of that. Gosh, I wish I had more time. But you know what I mean. Make sure you're keeping him in the role he's in. But God is God, and he is not. Thanks so much for watching uh, the It's Priscilla B YouTube channel, and I hope you join me for the rest of the month for Woman Wednesday and Day Job Friday. I have 15 years of experience, which includes with Google, Amazon, and others in the career space, and I'm about to break this thing down on Fridays, so don't miss that. Ladies, I hope you got so much out of this. I love you so much and want to see you have a bomb life and bomb relationships. I'll see you guys next time.